Well, amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another podcast this week, number 10 in the series, and uh, most likely the last one before the end of the year, or the last one for this year. Again, I will say hello to John. John, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. How was your week? Yeah, very normal this week. Just back to basics, working and not doing an awful lot else. Oh, but a bit bowling, went bowling as well. Good. Back to basics here in Spain and uh, bowling at the local bowling alley. Of course. In the league every every Monday. <laughs> oh, you have a league? Oh, yeah, we're bowling in the league, yeah. Okay, Got my cool. highest score of the year this year, uh, oh. this week actually. Well, what was that? 245. 245. Good. Do you play darts as well? Or? I used to. Uh, not, not in a league or anything. No? I used to play in the pub. A bit of fun, but uh, I miss that actually. Not in, uh, not in uh, a darts league. I, I know no. they do have, they have in... Uh, an electronic darts league here. yeah <laughs> i haven't actually seen a um a non-electronic type of league i suppose there are around the country but uh electronic darts is the big one here yeah it doesn't really that doesn't do much for me that no no it, it's very frustrating because uh they tend to bounce out a lot and nah, they do. It's, it's a lot lighter darts and it doesn't, mm. doesn't feel right now um so your week was uh just getting back into the routine john yeah, yeah. After the long weekend. Ah, yes. Uh, well, long weekend for some. I, I actually uh, don't get the long weekend. I had the Thursday off because it was a bank holiday, mm-hmm. uh, but the Friday for me was just a normal working day. So I had my classes. Mm. Uh, recorded a podcast. Yep, recorded a podcast. Yeah, we went went back to a normal working day for us. Yeah, uh, and then back to a nice, uh, w- very quiet weekend this weekend. Saturday and Sunday was basically just sitting around the. Uh, watching Christmas films and uh, playing with the kids. Really. Well, it is, it is a, a characteristic here in Spain that holidays fall during the week a lot of the times. It and does happen a lot, yeah. Hmm. Uh, as opposed to, I know in the UK they always fall on a Monday or a Friday, I think. Yeah, you have your... Except, um, except for Christmas Day. Yeah, for example, like May, the May bank holiday is, uh, is the 1st of May, hmm. but you'll have the bank holiday uh, will be the first Monday in oh, okay. May. Hmm. So, yeah, it's... It's, it's, sort of, it's sort of normally sort of controlled a little bit the only difference with that would be um, uh, your Easter weekend you've got Friday and Monday off yep. Uh, yep. And, and obviously Christmas and New Year's Day whatever day it falls on that's is right. a holiday but the rest are normally Mondays. whacked onto a Monday yep. yeah 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 in Australia I think um uh, I don't know whether it's changed, but holidays normally were on the Monday, except for those key days like Easter, Christmas, etc. Or well, Easter's always a Friday, so really there's no problem there. But um, I know, for example, different states celebrate different uh, holidays on different days. Australia Day always uh, is celebrated on the day that it falls, I think, which is the 26th of January. But uh, the Queen's birthday, for example, is never actually on the Queen's birthday. You know, well, it's, she's it's, got two birthdays, doesn't she? Anyway? I don't know, does she? Yeah, apparently she's got official birthday and a real birthday. So it's right for some, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, I didn't know that. But the Queen's birthday never seems to fall on the same day. It's a holiday according to how they work out the calendar, you know? So but that, that amazes me, though, because you guys, you know, you have the Queen's birthday as a public holiday. Mm. We don't. No, you don't. Well, she, well, she's there every day. So yeah, you don't really we, need to celebrate. Can't we get the, yeah, can't we get a public <laughs> holiday for? Yeah. Well, I think uh, it's quite fair, really. Isn't well, it? the the UK, I think, is one of the countries in Europe, at least, with the least amount of public holidays. I think yeah. you only have seven or eight. Eight, th- I think we've got eight. Yeah, I think it's eight, eight, hol- eight bank holidays a year. Whereas here, I don't want to. 14, 14 or at least 14 depends on the well obviously you've, you've got your uh, your national holidays mm. uh, which cover the whole of Spain yeah uh, and then you've got your um, aut- autonomous holidays uh, yeah. depending on the region lo- lo- and local local and local yeah, yeah, yeah. and local as well mm. but I think in total nobody has more than 14 or 15 it's about 14 I think yeah. is it I think it's about yeah. 14 yeah. It's, it's a, well it's a lot more it's than the UK more, yeah. I think in Australia there's probably 12 or 13 as well so there are quite a few but um public holiday season this time of year in fact since october there's probably been five maybe well you've got the 12th of october you've got yeah. the um is it the second of november uh well no, no the first, no, of, first november, of november and then the 9th of november was another yeah, one yeah 9th was another one that was a local one though yeah uh it was uh just madrid wasn't it it wasn't wasn't Rivas. Um, and then you've got the the, two. Um, the second, uh, the sixth, and the eighth of That's December, right. which the eighth was on a on a Saturday. Yeah. So um, obviously, for people that work on a Saturday, it was a day off for them. Even though the supermarkets uh, tended to be open at least till three. Yeah. 
but the holidays falling in the middle of the week, which is why people have that concept of the puente, which we did speak about in another podcast here, and also the aqueducto is another one where perhaps this particular holiday, the 6th and the 8th are holidays, one is on a Monday, one is on a Wednesday, and people can take sometimes the whole week. Well, if it's Tuesday and Thursday, that's, that's it. it. You've got no, no one wants to go to work on one day, go back on a holiday, and then yeah. go back to work again. And so a lot of people take at least one, uh, one or two right. days off. And everybody goes away, or a lot of people go away to the coast or to their village or to a country retreat, which is becoming very popular nowadays. This uh, rural tourism, as they call it here, yeah. very popular. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> People um, get away. That's right. Spend yeah. money. Help I think the more people are traveling abroad now as well than they used absolutely, to. Um, absolutely, absolutely. More people. Yeah, I mean, look, you look at it your Facebook feeds. And I think that's general uh, yeah. as well, though. I don't think that around the world people are traveling more nowadays yeah. than they were before. Definitely in Europe. Oh, oh, absolutely, uh, but Spaniards especially. I yeah. think uh, I've, I've noticed it more because of the amount of Spaniards mm. that are going away for. Uh, weekends. I mean, my my mother-in-law, my father, well, my, uh, my father-in-law, they, they never went anywhere at weekends uh, outside of Spain. It was always inside of Spain. Uh, yet now I, I look at the, my Facebook feed and I've got you know uh, my my cousins. Well, so I call my cousins they're my, my wife's cousins, but uh, she's got big family, a lot of cousins, and you know they're always oh, one's off to Paris, next one's off to Rome, and then they go on a an all girls weekend uh, uh, to Florence. Yeah, uh, yeah always off off somewhere. Yeah, well, that's it. People have got money to spend and they want to uh, get away. And uh, European uh, cities uh, in general are really, really um, popular destinations for Spaniards nowadays. And uh, Spanish cities as well for people coming here. I mean, you can't go to the centre of Madrid without seeing thousands and thousands of tourists nowadays or, or any city for that matter here in Spain. So uh, travelling in general, a lot uh, more popular. I remember when I first came to Europe back in the early 90s, 1991, I think was the year. Uh, and when I would go home, uh, you, I'd be sitting on planes almost by myself. You know, there'd be 10, 15 people on a on on, yeah. on, on some of the flights. But nowadays, you can't go home without an absolutely packed flight. No, I can't remember the last flight I've been on where it's been half full, and, mm. and that used to happen a lot. Uh, I used to travel a lot with work, mm. uh, sort of 15, 16 years ago. I was traveling all over Europe uh, doing my work, and often uh, got on a plane, there was less than half of seats full. Yeah, but uh, nowadays, very rare to see that, very rare. Yep. So, uh, yeah, the travel industry, uh, booming at the moment, due to certain factors, I suppose. It's a lot cheaper than it used to be, probably. Yeah used to have to pay a lot of money to travel during the week uh, here in Spain. But nowadays, you can get cheap flights, Ryanair, EasyJet. I think they still exist. And uh, God, yeah. a lot of the other um, low-cost. You love EasyJet? I love EasyJet. Great, they don't great seem company. to get the publicity that Ryanair gets, though, do they? No, because they're good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason, isn't it? I actually really like it. Um, I mean, I think in probably 16, 17 years using EasyJet now, um, to get back to the UK, well, they, always, fl well they fly specifically to Luton, don't they? They fly to Luton. Uh, well, they fly all, obviously all over the UK, but uh, Luton is one of their main hubs, mm. um, and that's really close to where I come from uh, back in the UK. So I always fly back to Luton. And to be honest, I think in 16, 17 years, the the biggest delay I've ever had was two hours with them, uh, and that was once. Uh, apart from that, I think probably 90, 95 percent of the flights I've had with them have all taken off earlier or on time whereas with Ryanair Ryanair just a nightmare I've, I think I've flown with them four or five times mm. uh, I've had delays uh, at least two or three times with them and the, just the treatment I think uh, the way they treat their, the customers I didn't like it very much at all no, and the no. plastic seats I really didn't like that didn't like that at all quite aggressive I think um, <clears throat> would be one way to describe them but Not anyway my favorites. Now, it was a difficult week this week here in Madrid because of the restrictions. I think there were a couple of days where uh, pollution restrictions were put in place, meaning that we couldn't drive our cars with the same freedom that we normally can. I, were, I think Wednesday was the day that I couldn't take my car into the city. I couldn't park in the street in Madrid. It was completely prohibited to do that uh, on Wednesday because of the uh, pollution, as I said. Uh, were you affected by that at all? 
I don't personally. I don't really get affected by it because you don't uh, go don't into going to Madrid hardly okay. at all. All mm. my classes are done from home, um, so I'm, I'm sort of pretty immune to that. Uh, it affects my wife. Uh, she works in the M30 corridor, um, so it does affect her. But mm. luckily, uh, she works uh, from home on uh, oh, Wednesday, she, okay. so that was all right. So she escaped that day. Yeah. yeah. So it's. Um, I'm looking for alternatives now to my uh, <laughs> diesel car. I don't know what the options are going to be. I don't really want expensive wanna, options. Well, I don't really want to buy a new one uh, if I can avoid it. But I'm looking at maybe some type of maybe gas conversion sticking on uh, lpg no. i think it's lpg is it or um some type of gas that that is uh, that is something i would consider doing mm. if um if it was cheap enough to do well i think I, I saw it for i'm not sure but probably around two grand but there's a they give you like some type of um economic uh, aid or some type of help some type okay. of subsidy to to get it done i think now is that the uh, is that the pump they've got the blue one the blue pump in the petrol station i think so one? Yeah, it's quite cheap as well, I think. Yeah, 66 uh, euro cents a litre. Yeah, a lot cheaper than so petrol. So it's nearly half price. Yeah. yeah. So if that's an option, I'm going to look into it. I'm not sure whether I can do it with my particular engine, though, though. so I'm going to have to look into that. I know you can do yeah. it with gasoline engines. I'm not 100% sure on the diesel aspect, so oh, right. I've got to look into it. If anybody out there can uh, help me with that <laughs> aspect, I would be most sincerely um, thankful if you can but uh, we'll see now the first thing we're going to look at this week is regarding the topic of bars now I read an article in the paper this week which uh, posed the question is Spain still the land of bars on every street corner and apparently drinking establishments have been declining for the last seven years in a row now I haven't noticed this to be honest I certainly haven't noticed it because, I mean, Rivas, they've been expanding. Uh, we've had more and more bars come in. But again, in Rivas, the actual town itself is expanding. We've got yeah. a lot more people coming in. Well, it's it's the business of choice for a lot of people. Yeah. So if you notice in these new areas that they're building in this particular area on the main street, they've got a supermarket and four bars, I think. Yeah. <laughs> And there's nothing else. No, I think there's a, real, there's a real estate agency, four bars, and a supermarket. Yep. So, there's, uh, so uh, I mean, you'd think you would be crazy to put four bars in the same street. But no, because on a Friday night you go past and nearly every one of those places is full. Well, they also, they, I mean, they work off each other as well. I would, mm. I would say rather than being competition, they actually bring more people in. Because if you can go to, some, uh, to an area where you've got three, four, five bars rather than just one. If you want to change or if one of them is very busy or someone prefers yeah. the food and one other, you can just move around. So I think it's probably good for them to be in, in little clusters like that rather than too separated. Well, and that's also the, the tapas culture as well, isn't it? Yeah. That you have um, a drink in one place and if there's another place close by, you whip into that as well and have a drink there or two. Or three. Or three, depending. Now, <laughs> the the difference in, 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 in uh, bars... Here compared to Australia, this guy's a lot of difference. Yeah, and uh, over the last ten years, over the last ten years or so, in Perth, where I come from, a lot of uh, tapas places have popped up, but it's not the same experience. And so, you, I don't normally go to these places when I go home, but people say, "Oh no, there's this new tapas place that's opened up. The tapas are fantastic. You, you got to go." I did go to one once, and uh, the first thing that I noticed was the price. The prices were extremely expensive, and uh, I don't know whether it's the the way. Uh, the, probably the food and drink culture in Australia is a lot different as well. It's it's not as relaxed as here. No. So the thing that I like about the bars here is that you go in and you've got the food on top of the counter normally, right? Yep. So you can see a lot of the you things. See what, what tapas they've actually got on offer That's right. straight away. And you can choose, you say this one, this one, and this one. You don't actually have to order a lot of the times from a, yeah. from a menu. And the person just, uh, the, 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 the waiter or the waitress just um, uh, picks it up, puts it on a plate, and gives it to you. Yep. There's no formality there at all, basically. Yep. And you, you know, it, I think it's just a lot more relaxed. But, I mean, that wouldn't be possible in England. Because uh, of health Because laws. of health and safety. Yeah, that's... Well, hygiene, food and, uh, food and hygiene. That's the issue uh, in Australia as well. Yeah. yeah. I think... Hygiene well, laws. I remember when I was running the uh, bowling centres in the UK, um, it was one of the first things that really caught my eye was the amount of wastage uh, that we had to try and avoid because of the food and hygiene laws. 
So I was, what, 20 years old and I had to really control what my staff were making every day, especially uh, during the daytime because we had, a, we had a pizza hut inside the bowling centre and the pizzas were allowed to be cooked and then stand for a maximum of 20 minutes on, on the display. After 20 minutes, you had, by law, had to throw them away and then make a new one if someone wanted one. Yeah. So, so, of course. So here that doesn't exist. No, but there's a lot of wastage because if you, you make one pizza and you sell like one or two slices and then, and then you don't sell it, it anymore, yeah. you, know, you have to throw it away. And you can't turn around to the person and say, oh, no, we're you know until someone else orders a couple of pizza, uh, pieces, I'm not going to make one because yeah. you know, I might have to throw it all away. So it can actually cost you a lot of money if you're not careful. Yeah. So that just couldn't happen in the UK because you couldn't have all these tapas You'd have to throw them away every twenty minutes. Well, well, especially with the Spanish omelette, which oh, just, God, yeah. which just sits sometimes on the counter for a couple of days. No, yeah, not not even on. Uh, well, I mean, the Spanish omelettes. Uh, you often see them in some bars. They're not even in a refrigerated no, unit or anything. They're no. just sitting on top of the, uh, right. the bar. I mean, to be fair to them, they normally have uh, a cover on them, normally a glass cover or something mm. on top of them. And uh, I don't think we're not really that bothered about it. It certainly doesn't bother me too much, unless it looks a bit rough. Well, if somebody's coughing well, yeah. in the vicinity, <laughs> it can be a bit disgusting. But uh, well, there are some bars that you go into and you have a look at the the guy behind the counter and you you don't order the food you know yeah. because you know that uh, he has his uh clean, cleanliness and hygiene are not, not one of the strong points of these uh, of these places and there are places that i do stop going to because of that reason you know they yeah get that, a bit I've run got me, down. that's happened to me more here than it has back in the uk mm. where i've seen something i didn't quite like and it's put me off going there mm. um but i'm i'm pretty relaxed with that sort of stuff in general but it has happened to me a couple yeah, of times yeah. here and the other thing is that with the the alcohol culture as well, Australia has very very strict alcohol rules. Mm-hmm. Um, the serving times that you can buy alcohol, the the the, the price is prohibitive a lot of the times. Uh, and um, whereas here it's the complete opposite. Yeah, you can buy a beer at any time of the day if the bar's open. A bar will open yeah. at six o'clock in the morning and serve you a beer if you want one. Yeah. You can't have that in Australia. No, same in the UK. So I think it's 11 o'clock till... 11 o'clock, Well, 11 it? till 11 is the... Well, it always used to be the official opening times of the pubs. Uh, so you could go in there at 11 o'clock if the pub opened at 11. Um, I think it was 12 on Sundays until 10. Um, so it was very restricted, uh, with the opening times. Now, it was a few years ago, they started changing the laws and, and they actually had uh, licenses that were 24-hour opening times. Uh, is that still summer. in place? It's still in place, but you ha- I think you actually have to specifically request uh, that, uh, those opening times and they can say no, okay. uh, depending on where you are. So, for example, in my town, uh, we've got eight pubs in my little town. Eight? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, all fairly decent-sized all, all, pubs. All on the high street? All on the high street. Um, well, no, sorry, one's just off the high street, uh, but it's all still on the main road. Yeah. Um, and we've got, I think, maybe three of them open uh, regularly, after 11 o'clock and go on till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, two of them are also hotels, uh, like rural hotels, as you call them here. So they've got maybe 30 rooms or something. Uh, and and a, a license. a very old building. Yeah. And a license, obviously. So in there, you know, they can serve residents until whatever time they want to yeah, if they're yeah, re- yeah. residing there. So. Mm. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the, the alcohol culture here is it's, it's, it's just not as rigid as it is. Uh, in a lot of other places yeah. and as I said you know you can just go into a place at any time of the day if it's open and buy whatever they're serving um, yeah hard uh, hard liquor uh, beer soft drink whatever you want anything you like I mean it's and they, and they close when they want to as well yeah, yeah they don't have an official closing time I think there is a maximum the for a lot of places especially with some of the residential oh, yeah, sure. laws yeah. you know they can't open 24 hours obviously a lot and of also the, the terraces have to be closed uh, right, by a certain yeah, time yeah. I think um, there's, a, there's a great little restaurant um, which I, I, I only found out about I don't think it was probably maybe six months ago it's called Butaka uh, mm-hmm. in Rivas um, and it's only a small little bar restaurant and uh, they've got a little terrace uh, so not massive amount of seating area but by 12 o'clock they have to close the terrace because obviously it's, it's right next to all the yeah, residents too noisy yeah uh, and they can't keep open after that time. So they do have uh, laws that obviously uh, prohibit 
certain uh, things, but the bar can stay open as long as the yeah. doors are shut. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that's that's one of the reasons why I think it's just so difficult to emulate the, the tapas culture in other countries. Um, Mm. For those reasons that we spoke, the, the just the relaxed nature. Yeah, and we've got a tapas bar in our town as well. Have you? <laughs> um, it is kind of a mixture between Spanish and Mexican, to be honest. Okay. It's not uh, an official Spanish uh, tapas bar. Um, Have you been? I, I went to it a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, and again, very expensive uh, when you're comparing the prices. Not the same. It's not tapas is like it's basically food that you would expect to get as tapas um here yeah. but served to you if you order it mm. so and it's not all the same either so yeah that's it that's it so it's difficult to uh, to copy that model yeah. the um, informality the uh, informal nature let's say of the uh, of the spanish bar system but yeah. they are disappearing and according to this it's because of the demographics are also changing as well so yeah. areas like this which has a, a vibrant young population we could say more bars and restaurants opening go to the uh, some of the other neighborhoods in madrid where the population is getting older they're not uh, they're not uh, getting the same amount yeah. of bars and restaurants and uh, keeping the neighborhoods alive because at the end of the day that's what really keeps the life in a lot of these places yeah I mean it's a big social aspect of Spanish Absolutely. life um, mm. a lot of people go down for a quick uh, drink before or after their dinner um, even during the week uh, you see people uh, regulars going in uh, for a drink and uh, sometimes they go down for a smoke and then they pop in for a a beer after having a smoke. Yeah, and, you, you, know, you quite often see yeah. uh, dogs sitting out the front. Yeah, because exactly. the, the owners, <laughs> especially the, in the summer, the, yeah. the owners popped in for yeah. a uh, for a Kenya or two. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely right. Yeah, it would be a shame if that culture did die out. Um, I don't think it will, though. No, I don't think it ever will. I think the, the Spanish love that too much. Uh, it's something's part of their life, and uh, and I think it's a really nice part of the Spanish life here. Um, I mean, one thing. You, you've got to say is uh, when you go to the tapas bars uh, you often find that some of them are very well, I don't say tapas bars the bars in general uh, you often find that you do get the same people uh, going there on a regular basis and some of the bars do have quite a, an older um, demographic than than others, yeah. And you've got to be a little bit worried about some of those because old man they, bars, yeah. They're, and they're old style bars as well. Mm-hmm. So unless they change a little bit, uh, the new generation coming through, uh, they might choose to go to other places and maybe a little bit more modern. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think some of the bars might have to adapt to stay alive. And one thing I will add regarding the hygiene aspect is the situation of the toilets in a lot of these places as well. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what it is about uh, toilets in general here, but uh, cleanliness doesn't seem to be the order of the day in a lot of places. In some, in some of the newer places, I've noticed that they are uh, putting a bit more detail on that. You know, a bit more attention to that. Yeah. But, but um, uh, in a lot of places, the toilets leave a lot to be desired. Yeah, I mean that that does happen. I mean, I don't think it happens anywhere, but it is something that uh, you've got to say stands out a little bit over here uh in general the bars do tend to have maybe just one toilet well, yeah. cubicle if you like yeah. uh it's not really cubicle it's one toilet yeah. uh maybe two uh for each sex um and they don't tend to be cleaned as often as you would like them to uh, no. so they can often be very uh dirty yeah yeah they can be dirty yeah i mean but again it's not everything it's not it's not everywhere you go and you know each bar is different so i don't like to generalize too much but yeah that does happen it does we spoke last week about some of the christmas traditions some of the the differences that you will encounter uh during this period uh the other thing that sticks out to me and always has is the new year's eve uh, tradition is the uh the grapes Oh yeah, twelve grapes. You you eat them? Yep. So uh, you're 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 almost a hundred percent Spanish now. It does seem like I don't know. I, I think I, well, I live with a Spanish woman. I've got Spanish kids basically, and uh, we obviously do the traditional thing and have. I refuse to eat the grapes. Sp- you refuse it? Why? Yeah. I don't like them to begin oh, with. Oh yeah, I love grapes. Yeah. And uh, normally at twelve o'clock, I'm ready for bed. I'm just I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really into anything at uh, twelve o'clock. 
Uh, I've done it a couple of times where I've sort of stuck two or three in my mouth and pretended to do it, but I never end up doing the whole 12. Really? No, 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 they used to have seeds in fun. them and you had to spit the seeds out. Or oh, whatever. no. We spent we spend a whole hour before dinner peeling, Pe- uh, preparing peeling the, seeds. the grapes oh, okay. and then get, taking the seeds out. Preparing and this is normally grapes. my job. Um, oh, yeah. Unfortunately, my, my mother-in-law passed away a couple of months ago, uh, but she always made me do that. It was my job every year because she... She cooked uh, the she New cooked Year's the meal. Eve uh, dinner. I normally did Christmas. And you were on grape duty. Eve. And I was on grape duty. So we'd turn up at sort of like half past eight in the evening and my mother-in-law's uh, doing the dinner. It was always late. So we, we always end up eating really late. And sometimes we actually had to have the dessert after the 12 grapes because that's how late we ate. Um, but that was my job. I'd sit down and there was, what, eight of us there. So that's a uh, hundred odd grapes. And I've got to peel 100 or grapes <laughs> and then take the seeds out 100 or grapes. I hated it. <laughs> but I loved it at the same time. Yeah. It was, it's just one of those really weird things. You, you don't enjoy doing it. What but was your you, role? Yeah, you, it's your job and it right. makes you feel part of the family. And we always had a bit of a laugh about it. I'd get there and all of a sudden my mother and me were like, grapes are waiting on the table. <laughs> and we were like, oh, that's your yeah. job. That was but, your job. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do it again this year, I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, we'll... Have a look uh, finally here, John. Someone asked uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago in one of the comments about taxes in Spain. Okay. Now, we are both self-employed, so we pay more or less the same amount of taxes. Yeah. Um, 20%, I think you have to, yeah. if you hand an invoice into somebody, I think it's 20% yeah. uh, income tax yep. that they withhold for you. Yep. And of course, you have your uh, VAT uh, either here, depending on the service that you give. Uh, yeah. I don't have that problem because I English uh, classes, I no. do English classes. So that's right, because it's part of the yeah. school curriculum um, yeah. where uh, we don't have to pay uh, VAT. Yeah. But if you're a translator or doing another type of uh, service job, graphic designer, uh, IT, and you're billing, uh, most likely you have to add 21%. VAT or IVA, IVA, GST in Australia to your invoice. That's the um, that's the uh, the situation when it comes to uh, being self-employed. And of course, if you're working for a company, you're on a, a pay-as-you-go system where they take um, money according to how much money you're earning. Yeah. The thing about being self-employed is that that twenty percent that they're taking out is going to change according to how much money you make over yeah. the year. So if you make a lot, you'll pay more than 20. If you don't make much, you'll pay less than 20%. Yeah. So that's when you're uh, self-employed. Uh, the other thing that you have to add to that is social security payments. Yeah, that's a killer. Which, well, that's a good word, killer. Because it's 200, it's, I think it's 270, 280, is it? 280, 280 is it? something like that. It's Around that. Yeah, it's, and, that, and that doesn't depend on how much money you make. No, that's every month fixed. So, if you make, you know, let's say if you invoice a thousand euros, we'll put a round figure there. So if you invoice a thousand euros, uh, you're going to be paying 280 euros, 28% to the social security, yep. plus that other 20% that yep. they're taking out, that's 48% of your money gone. Yep. Uh, and you don't get much of a rebate back. There's a little bit of a tax reduction, of course, um, yeah. at the end of the year. But it's a lot of money going out. A not lot. De- and as I said, it doesn't depend on how much money you make. Yeah. And it's a killer because I say the reason I call it a killer is it's 280 euros. Um, I mean, for me, for example, from September till May, um, I'm covered. I'm okay. Um, paying the 280 a month and then taking off the um, the income tax. I get a wage I can live on, fine, everything. Mm. But June, I have a lot less work, a lot less. And it goes down by 70% more or less. Um, and then July and August, I have nothing. Mm. So I'm still paying, uh, or should still be paying. Or you, you can actually uh, opt out for a, a month or two months uh, and stop paying that amount if you have no work at all. Mm. Um, but if you've got any sort of work whatsoever, you still have to pay that amount. Yeah. So in June, I I have very little work, but I've got work, so I still have to pay the 280 euros. And I actually had, uh, this year, I think I actually lost money in June because yeah. I had such little amount of work, and I still had to pay the... Yeah. 
Thinking, yeah, so there's not there's like not it. there's not much incentive there no. to uh, to keep working in those in those bad months. And unfortunately, when you are self-employed, the way the calendar year works here is, for example, a month like December, where there are a lot of public holidays, Christmas, the ones yeah. at the beginning of the month, people are celebrating their uh, Christmas things, and uh, nobody's really in the the spirit of work of working. Nobody really feels like working. You can end up, you know not making much money in these months yeah that was it was a problem for me about three years ago four years ago and, um, and, and august as you said before july yeah. august yeah. Uh, december was also a problem for me mm. uh december and january uh, because they don't re- people don't go back to work until yeah. uh or school until sort of uh, 7th 8th of january at the earliest yeah so well school anyway um but what happened was uh i was charging per per week or per class i was doing um and it if i only did two classes a month well instead of four well i was i was charging half the amount of money and it was causing me a complete nightmare in christmas so I, it was a, a time where you've got more expenses and i was getting actually a lot less income yeah. you know, half the income so what i did about three years ago i changed the way i was charging uh, my students so um I they think started it, i think you mentioned that last yeah, week yeah they well. started classes in in uh, september they go through till may so i took the amount of money i was going to be charging for all the classes mm. between those months and then i did an average and they pay that average amount every month and that at least that way i'm covered and i don't have to worry yeah. about a sudden drop in yeah. income yeah uh, and that's also another thing here that when it comes to uh, people earning salaries in a company a lot of the times their annual salary is split into 14 payments yeah. as well so you get there a lot of people get an extra um, paycheck in december and uh, july, july yeah mm, to help with those extra expense months but it's just the the, the division of the salary i mean yeah. it's not as if you're getting two extra ones it's just thirty thousand divided by 12 or by 14 whatever yeah. you happen to be earning so the question I want to ask here quickly is, um, do you think your taxes are uh, reasonable? Do you think they the money is well spent? Do you get the services that you expect for your for your uh, income tax, John? Um, as as a person who's self employed, I don't like the way they do the tax. Uh, personally, I think that if you're self employed, you should be paying a percentage of what you what you actually earn. And there shouldn't be a fixed amount, as they do in most other countries in Europe. I think Spain is the most any country in so Europe. So Spain's unique pays. in that sense. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty unique. I think uh, in France, there's actually um, like the, the self-employed, the social security payment that you have to pay fixed um, is zero. Mm. In England, it's fifty euro or well, fifty euros. I think it works out uh, for the whole year, and then basically you pay depending on what you earn. So social security might be 10% of what you earn. Um, the income tax might be 20, 25, depending on what- So it sounds what reasonable. Earn. It's reasonable because you're paying- uh, According to what according you earn. According to what you earn. Yeah. You might be paying more at the end of the year, but if you have trouble or you have uh, bad months or if you have uh, a, a type of job that uh, fluctuates a lot- Which we have. Which we have. Um, then you're, you've got more control uh, over your income and your expenditure. But here you don't. It's mm. a fixed amount and you've got to pay it and it does cause a lot of problems. You have to, I, I, mean, I have to be very controlled. I have to make sure I put a certain amount of money yep. away every month yep. to make yep. sure I get through the, the summer months. And it's also, it's also a barrier to stop um, – uh, well, I'm not going to say it's a barrier to stop people, but it does act as a barrier for – um, people to start businesses or people to become self-employed. It puts a lot of people off. It, well, uh, it puts it, a lot of people off trying. And the other thing is obviously at the beginning, the first, at least the first two years, if not the first three, four years, you're not going to be earning to your full capacity because you're starting a company up and you've got to get well, I think the there are, out there. And, I, I think there are, sorry to interrupt, but I think there are some reductions for yeah, the first year. If you're under a certain age, um, I think if you've never been self-employed before, that if you're doing it for the first time, yeah. right? Uh, if you're a woman, I think there's also oh, really? some. Oh, yeah, no. I think there's uh, benefits for females to uh, become self-employed. Um, I think it's. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I had the, those benefits as well when I first became self-employed. Oh, you did. Uh, not the same as now. They've improved it. Uh, but I think I paid the first six months instead of uh, the full full amount. Oh, I paid okay. fifty euros a month. Then the following six months, it was one hundred and eighteen yeah. or one hundred and twenty, oh, okay, and then okay. it gradually went up o- over the first two years, which was a lot of help. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. w- that did help me a lot. Uh, and now I think 
maybe they've actually uh, increased the the initial 50 euro per month payment up to uh, two years is it two years yeah however it all sounds very good and it does help uh, to start a business but the problem is this affects your contributions um, at, at the end of your working life yeah uh, so your, your pensions, pensions. Um, so if you're not paying in you don't get out which is understandable the problem is that if you have a, a percentage based social security uh, from the beginning then what you're working and what you're paying is it depends on what you're uh, actually invoicing. That's perfect. That's the, the best system to do. If you're earning a lot of money, but then you're only paying 50 euros a, a month, well, you, you, you're not put, contributing much into the system for later life. Mm. So why not pay more? If you if you're earning more, yeah, yeah. But then why do you have to pay so much if you're earning uh, very little at the beginning? So I think it's a, I don't like the system. No, but unfortunately, there's no way there's no, no. way around it because uh, you have to pay that that money. I've yeah. always thought that you know um, if there was some way that maybe if you could prove that you were paying your own private health insurance, if you could set up your own private pension fund, for example, maybe there would be some way to reduce those heavy state payments mm. but there's but there's none no i don't think i think it's, it's, a, it's a complete per, uh, fixed uh, that's right uh, i mean at the end of the day it's it's something i don't like uh, i don't like the way it's done i don't like the way it's uh, been set up at all but as i've said a few times before in previous podcasts i chose to come here i chose to live here and that's the spanish law it's so what you got to do i just got to do it and that's it i've got to suck it up and go <laughs> nothing else to it I don't have to like it but I have to get on with it and uh, I don't like to complain about it too much um, to anyone because you know I'm, I still feel even though I've been here for 20 years now I still yeah. feel like I'm a guest, a guest in the country but it does in my opinion cause as I said before a lot of people to perhaps try to avoid going th- becoming legal so Definitely. there's a lot of money under the table, as we said last week. A lot of um, yeah. people doing service jobs under the table. Yeah. A lot of money moving in that black economy because they, they... I mean, so if there was a way to make it fairer, to get yeah. more people participating, more people paying, I think the system could benefit uh, in general. Yeah, but, definitely. But, but I mean, I'm, I still, I'm still surprised the amount of people that make a comment with regards to my business. Uh, you know... You, uh, they say they actually expect that I'm not paying taxes. Uh, I'm doing it all in black, and it's, people uh, come up with a comment of, "Oh, but you you you, you pay taxes you're self employed." I'm like, "Yeah," and they're like, "What? Ah, oh, but you know, what, but they, you don't declare everything I no, do." I'm no, like, no, "Yeah, because, I declare everything I do. I declare because Why? they because they like, exactly because they expect you. Yeah, because you know. But then if you don't, I mean, if I didn't do it. I would. I wouldn't be out sleeping. I'm. A, I'm a worry wart when it comes down to it. I would worry about it, and I'd worry about uh, uh, being caught out. Apart from other things, but apart from that, it's like I said before. I'm. Uh, I still feel like I'm a guest of the country. So mm. why would I come here and then try and cheat the system? Try and rip everyone off. Yeah. So no, I don't like the idea of that. <laughs> so I I'd, I'd just too do honest. it legal. And too honest for you. Get on with it. Yeah. So the last so. question is going back to what we said before. So is your tax money being well spent? Are you happy with the services you get? School, uh, the schools, um, the uh, I like the schools. I think schools are right. Yeah. Um, they could be improvements. Health system. Uh, health system. I think the health system is very good actually. A mm-hmm. uh, lot of weights uh, for you, you know, GP. Yeah. Uh, that could definitely be improved. Uh, but in general, the health system is uh, pretty good. So you think that uh, your money is being well spent? To a point. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's all well spent. Uh, definitely some really, I mean, some things in Reeve actually look at and you think, why? Why did you do that? And why did you spend our yeah. tax money on that thing? But again, it's yeah. uh, it's uh, twos and fro's. Uh, I mean, they, they put up these really weird rusty sculptures on roundabouts and stuff, yeah. which they must have spent a fortune on. And you think, well, if you'd actually just well, put cultural. something... Yeah, it's cultural, but is it? It's like, you <laughs> look at it, you're like, really? For, for I mean, whom? Yeah, that's yeah I mean, yeah. What, it, it doesn't look that good. Uh, it really doesn't. You know, you could have put something a lot nicer up and a lot cheaper instead well, of spending 50,000 euros on three square blocks or something. Yeah. That's the problem with art. Yes, yeah. yes. It's, it's, it's everyone <laughs> either likes it or hates it or... Oh, that's right. Be, you, can never get, you can never get a general consensus on yeah. art, but anyway... <laughs> All right, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks again, John, for uh, participating. No problem. 
I got an Instagram this week from uh, an American uh, bloke who's doing the, what's it called, the, um, what do you do at the schools? The, uh, the teaching assistant program. Uh, yeah, auxiliary yeah program. in uh, Catamanchel, and he says he wants to participate in a podcast, so oh, great. might see if we can get him on uh, after uh, after the Christmas New Year's break, so we'll see. But uh, thanks for uh, watching the video, listening to the podcast. Again, remember you can download the podcast on all of the major podcasting platforms. Leave a comment if you have one about what we have spoken about today in the section below. We'll see you all uh, after Christmas now, I think, John. Yep. Merry Christmas, everyone. So Merry Christmas uh, and uh, Happy New Year to everyone. And uh, we'll see you then. Have a good uh, end of the year. Hasta luego. Mm -hmm.